What's up, good people? How are you guys doing? I hope you're having a nice Sunday, wherever you are. This is Pepe Cuenca, and I welcome you to the game of the day of round number four of the Grand Chess Tour of Croatia. Today I bring you a crazy game, a fantastic game, a roller coaster. Everything could have happened in that game between Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, and Shaq Mamediaro, super player from Azerbaijan. I have to tell you, I was analyzing this game for three hours and still get nothing. I understand nothing. It's been really, really crazy game and extremely difficult with a lot of tactical shots. So I'm sure you will enjoy this game. So why uh, we don't? Why don't we just cut the bullshit and start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares? All right. So Magnus Carlsen decided to go for knight f3, knight f6 from Mamedi out of c4, g6. Probably again showing his intentions of going for the Grunfeld and knight c3. If you're a Grunfeld player and you reach this order, it's time to play d5 now. Because if you just delay uh, one more tempo with bishop g7, now white can play e4, so d5 is not possible anymore, and then you have to go for the king's Indian. So knight c3, d5, and here there are several alternatives for the white player. Uh, the normal move is c takes d5, but you can also uh, try, or of course, d4 is really natural, but queen a4 is really, really interesting as well. So c takes d5, knight takes d5, and here many, many alternatives. You can go queen a4, queen b3, d4, e4, transposing to the main line, g3, and Magnus Carlsen here goes for h4, really aggressive move that has been tried in, in the last years. It was extremely popular like a couple of years ago and the idea is really natural. You wanna go h5 in the next move and then you wanna attack on the king side. There are different approaches uh, of how to face this h4 move. You can play h5. This is a move that I really don't like because now this square is available for this knight in the future, not now. And this knight is really difficult uh, to kick from there. So h5. Not very used among top players here. You can go a6, but there is a lot of uh, there is a, a really important subtlety here in this position. You go a6. White can go e4. Knight takes c3. D takes c3. Uh, c3 sorry, it's really interesting because after queen d1, king takes e1. Without the inclusion of h6 and h4 in this endgame, the best uh, setup for black is f6 and e5. But with h6 included, this is just not possible anymore. G6 is going to be extremely uh, weak. I'm telling you about this line. You go e4 here now, knight takes e3, d takes e3, queen takes, king takes, now f6, followed by e5 is the best plan for black, or one of the best plans. So that's why after h4 there is another possibility. Besides h5 and h6, it's just passing, passing. So just play bishop g7 and continue developing, or knight c3 followed by bishop g7. And this is what Shaq Mamadiarov did in his game. He took on c3, b takes c3, and bishop g7 in this position. Now Magnus went for h5, and Mamadiarov played c5. Really natural move, controlling the center, putting some pressure on... Uh, in the center on, 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 on a d4 pawn that can land there in, in few moves. So here Magnus plays rook b1, it's not the main line here, according to my database is either g3 or queen a4, this queen can uh, come to the king side in many many positions from a4 to h4 later in order to attack uh, a black king that can land on g8. But rook b1, only two games in my database uh, with this position and now Mamediaro plays the move b6, maybe already a uh, uh, important mis mistake I would say in this position. Let's try to understand uh, why. Because uh, of course if you play knight c6, let's say e4 here, now white's gonna have troubles in order to play d4 here in this position, right? But after the move e6, uh, Magnus is gonna be able to play d4 in few moves after the move e4 that he just played in the game. The reason is that now that you have played b6, there's no uh, pawn on b7 that can support the knight on c6. And now if you want to stop that d4 from Magnus, you, you will have to go knight c6. But the problem is that after bishop b5, black is forced to play bishop d7. If you go bishop b7, that could be a lot of pain after queen a4, d4. And if you go bishop d7, still d4 is possible. And white has managed to install a beautiful center on uh, with the pawn on d4 and e4. So b6, e4 was played by Magnus Carlsen, short castle by Mamediarov and uh, here h takes e6, h takes g6 and now d4 from Magnus Carlsen and actually the engines they really love Magnus Carlsen position already because of this b6 uh, from Mamediarov 
Marmite of goes for bishop g7, putting pressure on the e4 pawn, and now there are uh, a lot of interesting ideas for Magnus Carlsen. Queen d3 is a really natural move, protecting e4, protecting d4, and now there are a lot of ideas related by bringing this queen to a3 and trying to kick uh, Mamed Yarov's king. And bishop d3 is also really interesting, just an, a normal development move. The key is that actually black can take uh, the pawn on d4, because now after this bishop b2, look at this position. Uh, why, uh, blacks uh, got to resign. So bishop d3 was really interesting as well, but Magnus goes for the most uh, direct uh, approach with knight g5, protecting e4, putting pressure on f7 and allowing this queen to join the party on the h file via g4. So Mamedira says, you know what, I don't believe anything, I don't trust anything, so I'm just gonna take this tasty pawn that has really nice curry sauce on d4. You guys like curry chicken? just really amazing. I had this Nepalese friend, my friend Reddy. I was living with three Nepalese people uh, in my... Uh, uh, perdona, estoy trabajando. Uh, ¿Se puede venir en una hora? Sí. Sí. Sorry guys. The, 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 the cleaning lady just showed up. <laughs> what can I do, right? So, <laughs> Mamedero says, you know what? I don't believe in anything. I'm just taking this phone here. And now the position becomes extremely interesting. Because uh, Magnus went for the most direct approach with Queen G4, but uh, there was this uh, beautiful move, Bishop C4, actually. Uh, that is a really natural move, putting pressure on F7, probably Knight D7, only move, and here Queen B3. And actually, I, I, I didn't believe about this Queen B3 move during the Spanish broadcast because I thought, you know what, Knight E5. I was talking to my colleague and I was saying to him, come on, Dibis, I don't believe in this Queen B3 move. Just Knight E5, protecting F7, attacking C4, and I think black's better. He was saying, you know, I think white's better. And I was saying, you know, I think black's better, so let's bet. And then I lost a bet and I had to do like 35 push-ups during the, during the broadcast. So, because actually white is much better if black plays Knight E5. Actually, white I thought that you can take on d4, and then I thought you can take on c4, sorry, because I thought, all right, if the queen comes to h3, there is rook e8, and then after queen h7, just king f8, and nothing happens. But there, there's this uh, amazing finish, boom, rook h8 in this position. King takes, queen h3, and queen h7, and bishop takes, queen h3, and there's no way of stopping mate on h7 and, eight and h8. So that's why, after queen b3, Black has to play e6, and after c takes d4, white is much better in this position. There, is, there, there are a lot of tactical shots related by sacrificing something on e6, or even bringing the queen to a3. And Magnus would have had a, a, a really nice position. Instead of queen g4, which is really natural, and maybe the most natural move, um, uh, knight d7 only moved by Mamediarov, queen a3 threatening checkmate in one, and knight f6 was played by uh, players from Azerbaijan. And here again, there are uh, two interesting alternatives. Magnus went for the most uh, direct approach again with e5, knight h7 was interesting, but after knight h5, knight takes, let's say king takes, black has a lot of compensation for the sacrifice exchange. So e5 was played by Magnus, forcing knight h5, and here again, you know what, I was getting crazy during the broadcast, man, because uh, we had to analyze so much stuff here, it was so tasty, this position, bishop e2, bishop d3, even g4, it's extremely interesting in this position, actually bishop h1 just loses on the spot, because you take on h5, you threaten this guy, this guy has to go by h takes g6, and white wins. So after g4, the key is that white can play queen d5, threatening the pawn on e5 and the rook on h1. If you take here, you can take on e5, or you can even take on h1, and black's better. So g4, really interesting. Bishop e2, again, the key is queen d5, if you take on h5, then g takes h5, queen takes, queen a5, king f1, and king f5, sorry, queen f5, you protect the h7 square, f6 is common, or even queen g6, and black's better. And bishop d3 was also extremely interesting in this position, threatening to go, bishop takes g6 and queen e6, but here the key is queen c7, attacking this pawn on e5 and attacking this pawn on c3, and again it turns out that black's better in this position. So after knight h5 here, Magnus plays another extremely interesting move, e6. Sorry guys about the difficulty of this game, but again it is what it is, right? So. We have to go step by step trying to analyze everything in this position. So e6, again, an extremely interesting move 
here and uh, Mamediarov went for the move Queen D5. F6 was the best move according to the engines, but the position is again crazy. Bishop D3, well, that's, that was Magnus's idea. F takes G5, Bishop takes G6, and here the only move to get an advantage uh, for Black is Rook F6. If you go Knight F6, for example, there's Bishop H7. And then, for example, after Rook B5, what um, Black would have to resign very soon. There are a lot of discovered moves uh, with the Bishop. And uh, White is just uh, winning in this game, in this position, sorry. So, uh, after Bishop G6, the best move is Rook F6 here. Bishop F7, intermediate move, King F8, Queen H5. And after Queen D5, F3. It turns out that, according to the engine, this is just a little bit better for uh, the Black players. Crazy, crazy position. I completely understand that Mavidarov could think that he would be losing in any of this position. So he goes for Queen d5 in this position, maybe the most solid, sacrificing an exchange. E takes f7 from Magnus, Rook f7, and everyone was expecting Knight takes f7. But he goes for Bishop d3, not taking the exchange. I was not even uh, uh, able to, to, to find any of uh, Magnus's or Mamediarov uh, moves in this game. <laughs> So knight f7, king f7, and this position is equal according to the engines, of course, extremely crazy. Like you're taking on c3, this king is completely naked, we can see his bolts is in the center. And this king is also not very safe, so more or less equal. So bishop d3 was played by Magnus Carlsen, and here a really accurate move from Mamedi out of queen e5, the thing is, it, probably at home you'll be saying, come on stupid Spanish guy, why? cannot we go to f1 well boom there's knight g3 and white has to resign so after queen e5 check magnus carlsen, sorry magnus carlsen has to go to d1 and now d takes e3 for mamediarov knight f7 king f7 and we reach this position where uh, again white's an exchange up but black has two pawns in return and look at these two beautiful two beautiful bishops what else you want in life? You want a nice boyfriend? You want a nice girlfriend? You want to go to New York for your uh, holidays? You want to go to the beach or whatever? You got this bishop pair. Come on, shut up and enjoy your position. All right, so king f7 and now Magnus goes for rook e1 here. The other move was king c2. But then after rook d8, there, there are a lot of tactical shots related by uh, sacrificing this rook on d3 and some bishop e4. So rook e1 trying to win a tempo, but now Mamedero plays a really accurate move. c2 check. So the, the key is, if, they, if this queen moves away, then this king is going to be safe on c2. So that's why c2 forces white to take on c2 with the bishop. You take with the king, the rook on e1 is hanging, right? So bishop takes c2 and now d and suddenly is Mamediarov who is attacking on this position. This king is in a center, and this king is even safer than the white king. So queen d6, threatening checkmating one, and now Carlsen had to protect that bishop on d2 with queen e3, and now knight f4 from Mamediarov. You can never take on f4, of course there is a ping on the d-file, and now black is just simply threatening to take on g2, and king c1 only moved by Magnus Carlsen he is able to find. He's short on time already, I think he was less than 10 minutes in this position. And here, the key is, after knight takes g2, there is only move bishop b4, saving Magnus Alsen position. Knight takes e3, bishop takes d6, rook takes e3, and objectively, this position is around equal. I prefer black a little bit, because I got one bishop and two pawns, and the bishop pair, and this pawn is just a pass pawn. But alright, according to the engines, this is more or less equal. So king c1, and here Mamediarov goes bishop h6. Probably he was already uh, going for the win in this moment. And here, again, what is black threatening? For example, if I play g3, probably at home, you already saw black threat. Well, it's boom, knight e2 check. And after queen takes e2, just wins on that spot. So that's why after bishop h6, king b2 had to be played by Magnus Carlsen. And rook c8 by Mamediarov. Again, according to the engines, the best move was knight d3, not, not here, sorry, bishop d7, bishop c3, and now knight takes e2, and the engine finds a really uh, nice repetition, bishop b3, king a8, and bishop a4. You can never cover your king with bishop c6, because you, you can just take, and then queen e7 checkmate. So after king b2, Mamediarov goes, rook c8, putting pressure on c2, and now Magnus Carlsen regroups. Uh, his pieces by playing rook b to c1 and now his king 
it's gonna be hidden on b1 so no more checks from this bishop from from this knight and here again knight d3 it was very interesting it was not played by mamed out of the case after knight a queen takes e3 bishop d2 but here magnus can equalize with the move rook e7 check king e7 takes and rook d1 instead after rook b to c1 mamed out of goes for e6 not allowing any checks on the a2 g8 diagonal king b1 was played and we gotta say that after king b1 there are no checks on g7 so g3 is a real threat because there is no bishop g7 uh, to set the position so now g3 is a real threat because now this knight is pinned so that's why mami Diaro has to take this pawn on g2 so it's no more g3 ideas bishop b3 by magnus carlsen try to exchange a pair of heavy rooks rook c1 bishop c1 and bishop a3 regrouping this bishop going to f5 giving a check the important pawn on e6 so bishop b2 by magnus carlsen bishop f5 check king a1 and this is another important moment in the game because magnus was already threatened to go in order to enter on f6 also rook d1 is coming and looks like black uh, could be in real trouble so that's why mama mama of place a really precise move bishop g7 so no more troubles in that diagonal bishop takes king takes Rook d1 and knight d3. Mami Diaro's idea is to exchange queens with queen e5, and actually, white can't do anything about that. Bishop c4, queen e5, and we reach an endgame that is it is more or less equal. You got one rook, but you got you got one knight and two pawns. So this is a wrong equal, and it ended peacefully after a few moves. G5, rook c1, king f6, rook c7, bishop d3. Really good move. If you remove this bishop to d1 there is a5 and then b5 and then you will be you will be never you will never be able to take those pawns on the queen side so that's why magnus takes and then after rook a7 knight f2 rook b7 g4 this position is a completely equal g3 sorry let me just g3 a4 this knight is gonna come back to uh, stop the a pawn knight c5 and then this king this black king is gonna support the g3 pawn and nothing will really happen king c4 king b5 and rook g1 king d4 takes takes a6 and uh, the game ends peacefully what a game what a roller coaster what a roller coaster and magnus uh, really got a nice position out of the opening and then uh, he tried with the most direct approach knight g5 Probably he missed uh, this bishop c4 and queen b3 uh, idea, I don't know. But uh, it, suddenly, Mamedero had a, a really nice position and he was going for the win and Magnus saved the game. So, Nepo Miachi leading this tournament with three, three and a half out of four in the game of yesterday against Sergei Kajakin. He played uh, a not really precise opening in the Italian, uh, but finally he managed to save uh, the game. and. All games ended in a draw yesterday, so remember guys, you can follow all the action in Chess24 in several languages. And uh, it's been a fantastic pleasure for me, so I hope you guys enjoy the Sunday with your family and friends, make your barbecue, etc. You guys enjoy the sun as we do in Spain. So, have a nice day, it's been a pleasure, bye bye. If you drink, don't drive. If you play the dragon, don't drive. Bye bye.